Welcome all to this edition of ACAP Today for Friday, April 17th. I'm Jason Parent of the Arusta County Action Program. It's a pleasure to welcome you all. Today is Family Focus Friday, as we've done the last couple of Fridays. We're going to talk about things related to the family um, on this edition of ACAP Today. In just a little bit, two of our team members from Adolescent Services will be joining us. Uh, Jesse Pettengill and Chas Holland will be uh, joining us, and Chas will also have a special guest uh, that will be joining us with her right alongside her, uh, which is very fitting for Family Focus Friday. But before we come to them, we are going to, um, or go to them, I should say, we're going to uh, share the news you can use today and information we would like to share with you about things that are happening here or services that you can take advantage of. And so the first item that we want to share with you today on this Family Focus Friday is that we will be closed on Monday for the holiday so our team members can enjoy time with their family. That is all ACAP services with the exception of the Hope and Prosperity Wellness Shelter at Umpi uh, will not be operating on Monday, April 20th in observance of the Patriots Day holiday. You can still reach out to us online and we'll have that information um, at the end of the broadcast today about how you might be able to connect with us uh, over the weekend. The, uh, the next item we wanted to share with you comes from fresh from yesterday when this program was launched by Governor Mills um, and Maine Housing in partnership with Maine's 10 community action agencies, including the Arista County Action Program. The COVID-19 Rental Relief Program uh, provides a $500 uh, assistance uh, for paying rent for individuals who are of median income or lower, uh, who are having difficulty paying for their rent this month or next month because of circumstances related to COVID-19, specifically a change in their income. If you would like to apply for this program, you can go right to Maine Housing's website, mainhousing.org slash COVID rent, or we will be available to help you with applications online beginning bright and early on Tuesday morning at 8 o'clock. So if you need assistance uh, completing the application, please do call us on Tuesday morning. Otherwise, you can start the processing of your application and get it submitted all online through Maine Housing's website over the weekend. It'll be waiting for us when we return on Tuesday. We're also assisting uh, consumers and community members with a uh, filing for their economic impact payments or the stimulus checks as they're known from the Internal Revenue Service. Uh, this assistance is specifically for individuals who have not automatically received stimulus payments, uh, specifically for individuals who for whatever reason may not have filed income taxes for the last two years, uh, who would not otherwise automatically receive payments. So please do give us a call at 764-3721. We have folks that will be standing by again on Tuesday uh, to help you with this service and they can help you complete the form online uh, with the information that you provide them to hopefully get that stimulus check coming to you. Also a reminder that if you are interested in ACAP services, especially over the weekend, if you're uh, thinking that you may be eligible for some of our services or just want to know what that options might be, uh, please do fill out a new online form that can be found off of our website at the uh, space noted here on the screen. The new online form will provide you with uh, the opportunity to submit uh, some information to us that will help us when we reach back out to you uh, to best direct you for what services you may be eligible for or what support we may be able to provide you with. So please do check us, check us out at acap-me.org uh, to access the online fillable form. We also want to remind folks that the Home Energy Assistance Program and WIC program are among the programs that have a change in eligibility guidelines given COVID-19 and the economic impact that it has uh, that it has wrought on a number of families in our region. So please do continue uh, to, to give us a call uh, as it relates to this to schedule uh, an appointment for either the Home Energy Assistance Program or the Women, Infant and Children's Program as you uh, may be eligible uh, for support from those programs. And finally, in our news you can use today, we want to remind folks that it is Head Start recruitment season. If you are an expectant mother through parents uh, that have children up to the age of five years old, please consider giving us a call and learn more about the Head Start and Early Head Start programs. 768-3045 will get you directly in touch with us and the entire process can be handled at a distance uh, this season. So please do consider connecting with us. So now it is my pleasure to uh, welcome to today's program. Um, first, I want to say hello to uh, Jesse Pettengill, who uh, leads ACAP's Adolescent Services. Jesse, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. Great. And uh, Chastity Holland, who uh, we call Chas around here at ACAP, uh, and her daughter, Emmeline, who's uh, joining her on her lap there. Hi, Chastity, uh, Chas, and Emmeline. Hi, how's everyone doing today? 
Doing great. And it's nice to see you both because as I mentioned, this is Family Focus Friday. So it's nice to have mother and daughter joining us on screen uh, from home. Um, and glad to see you're enjoying some mother-daughter time um, right now. So, so Chas, I wanted to start with you uh, in, the, uh, in the interview today because we've been talking for the last week or so on ACAP today and advertising these financial literacy courses that your program, Improving Outcomes for Youth, is offering. And we're going to talk about the program, Improving Outcomes for Youth, specifically in just a minute. But tell us about these financial literacy courses that you are offering. Yeah, of course. So the financial literacy courses are, it's three uh, classes in the session. And the classes cover topics like uh, budgeting, savings, um, credit and your credit score, different things like that. And then um, loans. Um, we cover just a little bit about um, uh, purchasing an automobile, uh, different things, identity theft, and uh, just kind of a, a broad coverage of the different uh, financial topics that are important. Um, knowing your finances is, is super Super, super important. Now, Chas, it's for a, is it for a specific age group? Your program works with a specific age group. So who's eligible yep. to participate in these classes? Yeah, so we have it for uh, 16 to 24 year olds. I do have um, a few attending this next session that don't fit in the age range. Um, I'm not gonna tell someone that they, they can't learn about financial literacy if they're interested. If you're interested, join on with us. We'll, we'll absolutely uh, share the information with you. And it's uh, the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. Do we still have slots open if folks want to reach out to you like next Tuesday and join in? Yeah, yes, absolutely. Um, just, have, just send me a message. Um, my email address will be on the slides later. It's also on that slide that you shared a while ago. Um, they can email me, and then I'll email the Zoom link and we're gonna be doing them from six to 7 p.m. If it happens that we have too many people, I'll just open up another session at a later date. Oh, it also says here um, on the slide that I shared and I'm sharing again, that um, in addition to what you talked about in terms of the incentive and the importance of learning about financial literacy, there is another incentive, something about a gift card. Tell me about that. Yes, uh, this session we decided to give our attendants the choice between a Walmart gift card or a Hannaford gift card. So just to kind of help a little bit with uh, groceries, um, if they attend all three sessions, sit with us through all, all three, uh, listen to what we have to say, um, they'll get that gift card after like a day or two just to, to get it out to them. Great. Now, so why financial literacy? Why is financial literacy something that folks should pay attention to? Oh, it's super important. The um, financial literacy is not covered enough in families. It's actually expected that parents um, are the ones who teach financial literacy to their kids. And sometimes parents don't know enough of the information to pass along. So uh, my job there is just to kind of bridge that gap and, and give the education that um, people need to help them start at the right point with their finances. Uh, it's very easy to spiral into debt. And if you know where you're supposed to start, sometimes we can prevent that. Now, your program, we've been talking uh pretty much exclusively right now about up until this point about um, the financial literacy component, but your program is much more than just the financial literacy component, although that's a very important part of it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, very so talk about some of the other components. Yeah, we also do, um, so the students that I work with are 16 to 24 years old. Um, we work in areas that will help better their future. So some of the topics that we cover uh, or I cover are uh, responsible decision making, uh, pregnancy prevention, safe relationships, uh, of course, financial literacy, which we just went over, and then also fatherhood engagement. So um, we kind of, we target uh, the younger age to give them a better jump start towards their future. So uh, we want to educate in order to prevent pregnancy, um, 
to prevent uh, STDs and STIs, to uh, prevent the spiral of debt. It's all, all things that uh, can be detrimental to, not, not, de not detrimental, but um, diff like challenging to uh, people's futures. So um, we wanna make sure that we're educating these youth, young people in um, these things that are not always fully available in schools. Uh, sometimes they'll just barely cover the topic and then um, it doesn't really ever get discussed again. So my job is just to bring more education to that, to the uh, responsible decisions and then also the financial literacy portion. Now reaching uh, the population of youth, again, target ages 16 through 24, um, is, is normally something that can present a challenge, but certainly in these pandemic times with uh, folks staying at home and observing the stay at home order and things of that nature, it's, it, it's a little more difficult to reach folks, but you're making full use of technology and particularly social media to do that, aren't you? Yes, absolutely. We are uh, hosting our financial literacy sessions through Zoom. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> she wants to know if she can make herself some salad for supper. <laughs> healthy That's choices. very healthy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yes, we are offering uh, through Zoom for anything that we have to meet in a group or on a one-to-one -one, uh, basis. And then I'm also working on getting some postings out through the Facebook page. So um, Mondays are going to be uh, financial literary literacy posts for my target age range, so the 16 to 24 year olds. Um, those will just have a little tip or a little uh, activity that um, people around that age range can do. Obviously not restricting to just 16 to 24 year, age, year old, but it's more uh, targeted for that. And then um, Wednesdays and Fridays, you can find posts on the ECE page for uh, the littles to do with their parents. So Wednesdays are, uh, I'm calling them funny money posts. Um, those ones will be little activities that will help bring financial literacy to the, the little, little guys. So identifying uh, coins and counting money and stuff like that. And then um, Fridays, we're going to do uh, fatherhood uh, tips. So uh, engaging fathers in that father-child relationship. What's the matter? <laughs> That's because mom said that you're, you're okay. You're okay. This is the reality of uh, staying at home <laughs> with your you know, kids. That's absolutely appropriate, and we're sorry that Emmeline's having uh, having a difficult time. Did she not? Was she not able to find the cucumber or the tomato? Or was the, uh, was she the, wants to have supper, but it's a little too early. So it, my husband said no, which is totally fine. <laughs> it is, and we won't keep mommy too much longer, Emmeline. I promise. But I just wanted to make sure that people understood that how could how can they um, follow those postings? I think you mentioned Wednesdays are on the early uh, care and education Facebook yeah, yeah. post, but. Wednesdays and Fridays are in the Early Care and Education ACAT page, and then Mondays are going to be on the, um, the ACAT page itself. And then also uh, with the Wednesday postings, we'll be sending home some activities that the kids can do. So uh, if there's something that requires a printout, um, we'll have that stuff sent. That way, um, the barrier of printing is not uh, an issue. So they'll be able to participate without having to worry about where they can uh, print the, the products or anything like that. Well, Chess, we may or may not come back to you depending on if, if you need to go and be with Emmeline, we'll certainly let you do that. We might, if, if, you're, if you're still there, we'll come back for one final word for you after we're done talking with Jesse uh, before we head out for the weekend. But certainly understand Emmeline is your priority as well. It should be. And hopefully that maybe, maybe, she need, maybe a snack might 
help hold her over to dinner time. Oh, <laughs> maybe. We'll have so to. Thank I you, think Josh, so much. We'll, she'll be uh, fine. Thank we you. We may come back to you. All right. Thanks. So now we're going to move on to uh, Jesse Pettengill. Jesse uh, leads ACAP's Adolescent Services. And Jesse, uh, again, want to talk about a program that's very near and dear to you, and that's County Restorative Practices. So for folk, folks who don't know, because not everybody out in the community knows what this is all about, share with us what this is about and how it's changed um, with the advent of pandemics. <laughs> Sure. So thank you very much. By the way, uh, Chas is doing a fantastic job, and I'm so thankful that she's been so creative with all of these uh, ideas that she's had to continue her work, even though we are sequestered away in our own homes, uh, doing, a, doing a great work for ACAP. So County Restorative Practices uh, involves people who have caused harm in facilitated conversations with those that they have harmed. Uh, and it involves them in that conversation in the context of a wider group of stakeholders. So whoever it is in their life that uh, they see as important, that they see as an accountability partner, uh, that maybe it's a coach or a teacher, uh, maybe it's a favorite uncle, we bring all, we identify those people and then we bring them all together and we have uh, trained facilitators who help facilitate conversation about uh, what happened um, what, what the young person was thinking at the time when uh, the incident occurred, um, who they think has been affected uh, and how, and what they think can be done to make amends. Now, it used to be that we uh, held these restorative justice conferences face-to-face -face in a circle with nothing between us, uh, much like you see on the slide to the left. Now, of course, we are not able to do that. Uh, even <laughs> It's hard to uh, have chairs six feet apart and still be able to hear all the way across the circle. So we are, we are now engaging uh, in similar processes, of course, using, using Zoom. And I, I just want to point out that none of the photos here are anybody that's in my, been in my program. <laughs> we do, of course, have some strict rules about confidentiality. I just peeled these off of, uh, off of a Google image search. But uh, that's, how we're, that's how we're continuing on in this day of uh, social distancing. So, so tell me now about how some of the great work that you're doing um, in your program and some of the, the, the information that you have to share with folks, this is Family Focus Friday, um, how that can help families and what some of your advice might be for individuals who are, as we mentioned, sheltering in place, socially distancing, all of those things. Um, um, as Chastity just, you know, demonstrated there with her, her beautiful daughter, we're together, we're together a lot more. And um, it is, uh, it, it can be both very rewarding as it is, um, and, and also challenging from time to time. Yeah, so I created this slide with a couple of, uh, a couple of funny memes just to illustrate this new circumstance that we all find ourselves in. Uh, this is a difficult thing to do. Um, we are, uh, rapid, you know, very busy, generally speaking, and the kids are going to school, and maybe they have their after school programs, and maybe they're going to friends. And of course, we go to our various places of employment and run our errands, and seldom are we contained within four walls for long extended periods of time. And, and now we have found ourselves doing that very thing. And uh, it's testing the limits of, uh, of family bonds. <laughs> And it's presenting some challenges, of course, parents now being uh, given the responsibility also of following through with the curriculum that the local teachers have been providing. Uh, I know I've had conversations about this with Chas, uh, trying to juggle her work while also providing for Emlyn and uh, the education that Emlyn needs. And it is stressful. Uh, so I thought maybe the restorative practices lens of what I do as a facilitator might be a helpful lens to uh, encourage some families that maybe are dealing with some problem behavior. So I have a short little um, uh, illustration and then a, a couple of anecdotes to kind of go through that may, maybe it would resonate with some and, and help them in their, in their time of social distancing as they're all together in, uh, in one place. So it's, it, you're, you're going to share that through a prism called a social discipline window from what I understand, correct? Correct, yes. So you take it away. Tell, tell us what we need to know. 
Sure. So uh, the social distancing window is going to come on your screen. I'm just going to take a couple of seconds to explain it. And then it's a lot easier to sort of show anecdotes or to, or to give anecdotes that kind of illustrate uh, the social discipline window and, and, and uh, gives us some encouragement to uh, engage with our children or do youth engagement in a different way. So as you can see with the slide that's on the screen, there is uh, uh, a graph here with uh, an y-axis and an x-axis and if you can see uh, the green y-axis is going from low to high and what that's measuring is uh, control and limit setting and discipline and, and boundaries. Uh, these are things of course that it's important for us as parents to be able to uh, structure with our families with our children. Um, so that's what that uh, side of the of the graph is measuring. The other axis, the orange, is going from low to high, and that's measuring the support that we give our children and the encouragement and the nurture and the relationship building component of uh, being a parent, which is incredibly important as well. So if you take these two axes uh, and you show them on a continuum, it really provides us with four quadrants uh, that our parenting sometimes uh, will fall into. If, if, if I could start with the upper uh, left, uh, that quadrant is called uh, the two quadrant, right? This is when we have high boundaries, high limits, uh, uh, high rules, but we're not so high with um, our nurture and, and our caring and our expressing ourselves through our relationships. So here's an anecdote that will kind of line up with, with that particular quadrant. So Jenny, let's just say Jenny's a, uh, a, a child for illustration purposes. Jenny is running inside the house. Uh, she's winding up the dog. I have, a, I have a walker hound. So as soon as you start moving in the house, it lets out this bark that would curdle milk. Uh, and she's uh, coming close to ramming into sharp corners of furniture. And as a parent, you're concerned about this behavior. So someone who's responding to Jenny in the two or the, or the punitive category might, might uh, respond in this way. So dad demands that Jenny stop and then sends Jenny to her room until she can learn to walk and not to run. Now I'm guilty of this. Uh, punitive is sometimes the fastest way to react to a situation. Um, and sometimes it's a, it's a necessary way, like for instance, if there's some extreme danger, like someone going to touch a stove or running into the street, that sort of thing. But in some circumstances, it's not the very best way. And, and we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, the next category, if, uh, if you were to go from the bottom uh, right, uh, you have the four category or the, or the four quadrant, excuse me, or the, or the permissive quadrant. And, and this is where we have really high support, really high nurture, uh, a really high a sense of relationship, but we don't have a lot of rules and structures. And so we tend to do things for our children rather than do things to them. And sometimes in doing things for our children, they really don't learn the necessary uh, discipline in life to do things for themselves. So in this particular instance, Jenny is performing her, uh, her same behavior. Uh, so dad reaches out and he grabs Jenny by the shirt as she goes by and he makes her stop all on his own. Jenny doesn't stop, but father makes her stop. And then dad tells her to quit running. So Jenny starts to walk as fast as she can without quite running. And probably when she's out of view, she, she picks it back up again. So that would be the, the four category. If you go to the next uh, slide, we'll show the other uh, two quadrants. <laughs> So uh, the third quadrant I want to talk about is the one that is uh, to the left and on the bottom. And this is the quadrant that is both high, uh, low in control, rules, uh, boundaries, limit setting, and also low in nurture. And we call uh, this the quadrant where you're not doing anything at all for the discipline uh, or the nurture of your child. And it's what we call the neglectful quadrant. So an example in this case, uh, Jenny's running again, same behavior. Jenny's dad rolls his eyes, screams to Jenny, knock it off, and then turns back to his TV show thinking these kids will never change. <laughs> Jenny, of course, continues to run when she's out of her father's sight. So there's 
very little happening there in regards to relationship, but also very li little happening there in regards to uh, rules and uh, limit setting. Finally, we get to the fourth quadrant, and of course, we've saved the best for last. Uh, this is the quadrant uh, in the upper right. We call this the with quadrant or the restorative quadrant. So in this case, uh, we are both high support, uh, high relationship, high nurture, and we are also uh, high in limit setting and accountability and all of those important things. So same behavior, and let's see how dad does this time around. Jenny's dad asked Jenny, can you tell me why you are running? Jenny explains with a smile, a green monster with big teeth is chasing me. So dad responds, I can see why you would want to run, but it makes me feel nervous when I see you running because I'm afraid you will get hurt. Can you think of another way to escape the monster? And Jenny responds, I know, I can hide. And Jenny finds a good hiding place behind the living room couch. Now, let me just point out a couple things about what's going on here in quadrant four. Notice that uh, the father engages the daughter about the activity and he asks for an explanation. Uh, why are you doing what you're doing? Uh, what is it that's going on right now? And because of that, he learns some additional information that Jenny has this great imaginative thing going on in her mind. Uh, she's excited about it. Uh, there's a scary green monster out there chasing her. And suddenly, uh, dad can understand. I see what's going on in this young person's head. And then when dad responds, he acknowledges that. Wow, I can see why you would want to run, uh, given those circumstances. And then uh, he goes on to uh, share uh, her, his concern in terms of relationship, not just in terms of some rule or a household rule. So when he says it in terms of relationship, he says, I feel nervous because I'm fearful that you're going to get hurt. And so now Jenny is feeling that nurture and that love, even with the, even with the boundaries and the accountability being a part of it. Then finally, uh, he uh, advocates for youth voice by asking Jenny, is there something that we can do that would help me with my concern, but would also be good for you as you're trying to escape the monster? And she's, of course, is able to come up with a brilliant answer. And by the way, most kids are. And it's a win-win, right? Jenny feels engaged with, she feels understood, and father is able to relax because Jenny is not uh, in danger and uh, causing worry. So that would be the optimal quadrant for parenting, Je Jessica. Correct. Perspective. Yes. Okay. Great. Great. So help me sort of bring everything together um, for parents in this, in this particularly challenging time. I'm going to ask you both. I'll start with you, Jesse. Um, what's your advice uh, for parents at this time? My advice would be to take care of yourself uh, and know that you are doing your best. Uh, I can give some parenting advice, but uh, the truth of the matter is I've never experienced any of this either. So I like to go through life assuming that others are doing their best and to try to do my best myself. And uh, if things don't work out perfectly, just let yourself know it's okay, uh, that you're doing your best and uh, you're gonna learn from whatever it is that you did the first time and, and maybe find your way to that fourth quadrant and in, in more of your interactions with your young people. And anything else that you would like to add, Jesse, before we go to Chas and get her advice for parents out there and her final thoughts? I just wish wish everyone well. I'm thankful for ACAP and the opportunity to uh, do what I do every day, and I hope everyone has a great weekend. Great. Well, I wish you the same, and we're thankful for you as well. And we're also thankful for you, Chas, but what would you say uh, to parents like yourself out there um, who are navigating these unprecedented times with their children? Oh, just know that you're not alone. <laughs> um, we are all... I mean, it doesn't matter what age your kids are right now. We're all going through something that we're completely not used to. I mean, other than maybe the parents that have been homeschooling. Um, reach out. Reach out to your friends. I, I was able to speak with one of my friends and found out that we were both in very similar uh, boats at the time. And she's like, thank you so much for reaching out. I just needed someone to talk to. So reach out to your friends, reach out to your family. We can't hold each other and hug each other right now, but 
you know, we can certainly talk and <laughs> in case you couldn't tell, she loves attention. <laughs> right, so let's, so Emily, Emily, what do you have to say to your friends? What would you want to say to your friends today? What do you want to say to your friends? Or maybe what you might want to say to Mimi, because I know that you were on with Mimi earlier and maybe you want to say something to Mimi. What do you want to say? What's your, what's your bit of advice? They can't spell backwards, silly. What's your bit of <laughs> L-L-V-E. Oh, that's beautiful. That's a great mm -hmm. message. We can all learn from the message of love. So to mm -hmm. all, of, all of you out there, and to thank you, Chastity, and thank you, Emmalyn and Jesse, uh, we send our love um, and our wishes and the same advice, pass along that same advice. Please do reach out. We may not be able to reach out in person to one another, but reach out by phone, reach out using one of the technologies like we're using to record this broadcast. Uh, but do stay in touch with people, be kind to one another, and be supportive of one another. So for joining me uh, on Family Focus Friday on ACAP today, I'm uh, very grateful to both of you, and I'm very grateful to both of you and all three of you for the work that you're doing and or supporting. And yes, bye-bye, Emily. It was nice seeing you. Uh, and before we go, though, we're going to just remind folks of a couple of things, uh, a couple of pieces of information that we do want uh, in individuals to stay in touch uh, during this time, including staying in touch with us. We are here for you, and we're all in this together. Reach out to us when we're open. We'll be uh, back open Monday or Tuesday morning this week, Monday the holiday, 764-3721. Uh, Email us at acap-info at acap-me.org. Visit us online, acap-me.org, where you can also fill in the um, information so that we can get back to you on Tuesday and, and, it, and help us along in terms of what assistance we might be able to provide. We're on Facebook. We'll be there all weekend and all next week. Uh, so please do check out our Facebook page, including some of the wonderful uh, information that uh, Chas is sharing there. And then do check out our YouTube site where you can view a past, um, past broadcast of ACAP today, as well as see some of the wonderful uh, teachings that our, uh, and activities that our early care and education professionals and our prevention professionals throughout Aroostook County are posting on ACAP's, ACAP's YouTube uh, page. And then finally, uh, as we do every day, we end uh, today's ACAP today. And, and appropriately so, Family Focus Friday, with our snapshot of the day, which is teaching with tenderness through technology. Uh, today's submission came to us uh, from Hillary Albert, uh, who along with uh, fellow teacher Wendy Deves, uh, were spending some time teaching through technology with this beautiful family right here. Um, this is what um, was written to me uh, by, uh, by uh, Hillary Albert. She said, Wendy had video conference called before with this family, but it was my first time. When Oliver, the young man, heard my voice and saw my face, well, it was priceless. His grin was from ear to ear, and well, I have no shame in saying that mine matched it. We had the boys request a song from my songboard, and one picked Baby Bumblebee song and the other Old MacDonald. The boys sang with Wendy and I leading. The boys tried matching our motions as well as mom. We practiced some colors and animal sounds too in between them, hugging the phone, saying our names while laughing. Mom worked hard on keeping both boys engaged in video and supported them in answering questions uh, by modeling. They also watched while I read a short noisy fire truck book. Each button I pushed, they'd wiggle and giggle, I should say. They get, the giggle helped feed my soul. Distance learning is not easy, but that's what we, ha we have, and that's what we will make the best of. How far this little family has come in the past three years since she's been working with them, this is Hillary Albert, I am so proud. They are part of my why for keeping on, keeping on. I know that what we do here works, and I'm proud to be a small part of what we do, and Hillary, we're proud to have you and Wendy and Jesse and Chas be a part of all that we do. And so for all of us here at the Arusta County Action Program on this Family Focus Friday, heading into a long weekend, we wish you all the best. Uh, stay in touch with one another, be kind to one another, and we'll see you back here for another edition of ACAP today early next week. Thank you so much.